Oh, we're rolling. Are we? Yeah, we've been rolling this whole time. <laughs> Good thing we didn't talk too much about the <laughs> 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 Hello and welcome back to the Whiskey Rant Podcast. I'm Jeremy. <laughs> Botched it. Mm-mm. We're rolling. This is this I is gold. I said, are you ready? And you said yes. And like, and no, no. Like, this is all part of the podcast. <laughs> Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy. This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Welcome to the Whiskey Rant Podcast. So I'm a little crusty. It's frustrating. And it's going to be a little bit of a rant. I don't understand it. I don't know why. Some sort of injustice. Anyway, end rant. I'm Rob, by the way. This is the Whiskey Rant Podcast. It's been a minute. It's been too We've, many minutes. We've uh, taken the summer off, pretty much. We pretty the, much... The podcast. Uh, like, not only just on the podcast, like pretty much my entire channel, I took the summer Me off. Me too, man. Summers are busy. They go by quick. Uh... You know, yeah. I don't know. Not too many people, well, I was going to say not too many people drink whiskey during the summertime, <laughs> but of course you do. No, yeah, we drink whiskey for sure. But it's like, it's just slows down, I feel like. The whole yeah. industry slows down a little bit, right? It's just hard to, like, coordinate with two animals that, like, I'm trying to keep alive on a regular basis. And These are your children you're talking my about? My children, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, it's it's tough. But it, you know what? I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad we're in this backyard, and we're going to try to bang on an episode right now. It's a nice night, and tonight we're going to be talking about some, like, something that's happening, or it's like a new trend that's happening with retail stores. Yeah. And it's about allocated bottles, and it's about them maximizing what they can sell with the small selection allocation that they get. Yeah. So, basically, if you don't know... Um, a lot of these companies hold the retail store hostage when it comes to buying their Michter's toasted barrel rise or their, this is a toasted barrel, yeah? Or the barrel strength. This is just the barrel strength? This is just the yeah, barrel so strength. Yeah, so that's what we're drinking tonight. We're drinking the uh, Michter's barrel strength. It's 2020 release. 20? Yeah, or 21. It's, I think it's the most recent one. So it's the top. 21. To, uh, uh, 2021. Okay, sorry. 2021. 53.2%. 106.4 proof. I never say proof because I mean, what, I, what does proof mean? You know that you can't actually ABV. find what that means in the dictionary, like other than like you know, proof, like I, evidence. I know what what like would originate, but what's the point of talking about proof when you just say the ABV? Yeah, ABV is what's important. So these stores are being held hostage because like. Michter's has a whole slew of like the sour mash and all the stuff that like literally nobody buys. It just sits on shelves and like at the LCBO, it's like, for it to sit on the shelf at the LCBO means nobody's buying it. You're talking about like the US one, their exactly their entry level stuff, right? But in order to get this stuff, the good stuff, the the barrel proofs, the toasted, the, yeah, the ten year old, the rise, exactly yeah. all that stuff, you have to buy X amount of the other stuff. So before it even gets to the retail like stage the merchants the, the brokers the brokers, the brokers yeah, are like exactly. yeah if you want some Michter's 10 year old yeah here's a case of you know fireball whiskey that you have to buy from me as well yeah here's no, a 10, case more like 10 or 20 sure. cases yeah, yeah that's here's like, a bunch of my generic stuff that i need to move mm -hmm. and if you want an allocated bottle or a case you have to take this as well yeah and and it's happening with everything now it's happening with you know uh buffalo trace you have to buy X amount of the garbage stuff sure. in order to get. You want a bottle of Blanton's? Yeah. Here's three cases of Blanton's. That's a great gold. example. Blanton's gold. You're getting a case of Blanton's gold if you get, you know, 50 cases of Buffalo Trace that's going to sit on your shelves for three years. Yeah. And well, it's going to continue to sit Buffalo on Buffalo Trace doesn't really sit on shelves. But. True. But, I mean, it used to. But other examples, right? Because, like, there's lots of other big brands that have generic whiskeys and not necessarily even like whiskey. They might have like vodka, they might have gin, they might have whatever. Yeah. Right. And yeah. these brokers are like, you want this, you know, take this off my hands. Yeah. And it's translating to customers, not only in the price of the allocated bottle, which you guys know is just out of control at of some course. retail shops yeah. in the U S the price tag that they stick on these things is insane. But, now they're starting these bundle packages yeah. where you know it's a four or five bottle bundle and right in the middle is the one you want but yeah. the bottles on the outside I know, are, are you know, just okay just or, or some, i mean depending on the the store but yeah it can get out of hand really quick now i'm gonna well, let's play a little game here we're gonna play oh, you are the retail store mm. okay now I come to you. You want the new Spring Bank release, whatever it is. So let's call it the 15. It doesn't year matter old, what it is. I want it anyway. Yeah, 15 year old Marsala cask. 
That's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. All right. I just made it up. That doesn't actually exist. Don't go crazy trying to find it. <laughs> it's not real. All right. You want that. But in order to get that, you have to buy a whole ton of Kilholman. Like yeah. we're talking several cases of different types of Kilholman because there's lots of them. Yeah. You have to buy, you know, and the other stuff will sell out quick. So it's not so big a deal. The, you know, long grow NS is one of the ones that maybe will sit on shelves for a little while. You know, you have to buy your Springbank 10, you have to buy your Hazelburn 10, you have to have all the other stuff. Yeah. Now, let's say that Kill Holman sits on your shelf for an entire year. What do you mark that bottle of Springbank 15 that everybody wants in the world and you only have six of them? What do you mark that at to justify the amount of money you put into getting all this other stuff from Kill Holman that you don't want? Yeah, I mean, I get it, right? And like, we are kind of like, sympathetic to the retailer i think a little bit in our argument here it's yeah. like it sucks for the consumer but if you're being held hostage you know you got to price your allocated bottle at an amount to justify what's going to be sitting on your shelf or absolutely. what you might not necessarily sell right yeah absolutely and I, like they they should be held accountable within reason too though like let's be honest yes i want that kill i want that spring bank but I don't want to buy 10 other bottles that are just going to sit on my I shelf know, now. but you got to play the game, right? I know. Right. Or else you don't get your allocation. Or it goes to some, get it. someone else is willing to do it. Now, what a lot of people justify it in the other way. Like, well, let's say, you know, Springbank 10, for example, the, the local barley, the, the most recent local barley. There was packages being sold to get that Springbank 10 local barley. You had to buy four other bottles or whatever it was. Yep. Now that whole package wasn't valued at what the Springbank 10 local barley was on secondary. So sure. when you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do this mm -hmm. and I can consume the other four bottles for free essentially if I, if I flip that. True. Right. And I mean, I guess it's not like buying a package deal of bottles. I mean, you might already have something in there. It's most likely going to be some generic stuff. Yeah. Um, not the end of the world. No. But you'd rather just buy the one bottle at retail than buying a, a bundle of bottles. Absolutely. So, like, I think this is going to be something that we're going to experience moving forward across the board. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know a fair way to say, okay, I only have 10 bottles of Springbank, 10 local barley. I have 100 loyal customers. That's just my loyal customers. You know sure. what I mean? That's, that's Those are people that are dropping 25K a year. A year. You. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So, like, how do I choose between these 10 loyal customers? Do I do I pick my friends? That's, I mean, that's a little shady, but I, I'm sure it's done. Yeah. Right? Do I take them for myself? I'm sure that's done as well. Um, or what a lot of these guys are doing is the lotteries, right? Like sure. uh, Kensington Wine Market, he does. Like, Andrew does lotteries all the time. Yeah, that's probably the most fair way to do it. For sure. Um, but I mean, guys that have been with that company from day one are probably saying, "What the hell? Like, I don't want to wait in a lottery. I want the bottle like I got it three years ago <laughs> in the caseload." Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. Long Grow Red, not that long ago, we were buying cases at a time. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Now. You can't even get I one. I don't have the new one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy that could probably hook you up. How you know a guy? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's getting out of hand. And I think it's just going to get worse. It Springbank was the equivalent of BTAC in the UK for a very long time. Man. We're starting to smell that. Mm -hmm. We're starting to smell that like coming. You yeah. know what I mean? It's If this year wasn't an indication as to how ugly it's going to get soon, I don't know what is because yeah. like it was impossible I mean, to get. the bur the bourbon market's been there for a while right this has been happening with bourbon for since the pappy craze yeah you know I would just I would love to know what people have to do what their invoice looks like when they have a case of pappy in it you know what else is included of that what else are they having to buy yeah. from these brokers good point um, when they have when they get a case of pappy and I mean like it's great promotion for their store but I feel like it's just a hassle for them. Yeah, so, I mean, the markup, if they're selling it for an MSRP, mm -hmm. they're not making that much money on the bottle. They no. get, like, you know, a handful. And they get 300 people waiting with little tickets trying to win one. Right. So, this is the thing is, do you, do you like, you know, jack up your price and stick out like a sore thumb and become mm -hmm. that guy in the retail market that 
you know, sells Blanton's gold for 400 bucks? Or do you do these bundles? Like, what's what's the lesser of the two evils? I don't know. I'm not. I think it's the bundles, to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, you can't risk not like losing your allocation, right? You have to keep the relationship going, and yeah. that's the way it's going. I mean, you have to play ball. I mean, I don't really see any other way around it. Uh, and yeah, it's it's just it's trickling down to the cons- the consumers now, and yeah. whiskey's getting expensive, man. It's going way up. It honestly, I'm doing a reno for you know partially for the channel because like uh, i want to have like a official set where i have my bar and all these things so like we're doing our basement everything's going crazy through the roof dude everything like you can't buy a piece of wood now for that's right lumber right lumber's like, crazy lumber. actually lumber has dropped a bit like luckily um but just in general everything costs like a stupid amount of money you're looking at almost at least one third more than you would have pre-covid it's yeah, crazy. is that like a, is that like a supply thing? Like, uh, since COVID happened, the manufacturers slowed down and then couldn't keep back up with demand. Yeah, well, because like you have to stay home. Right. So what's everybody doing? They're doing their backyards. They're doing their basements. They're making their livable space more livable. Sure. Essentially, right? Like yeah. they're not going on vacation anymore. They're not doing those things that they used to do that consumed a lot mm-hmm. of their money. Uh, yeah. So they have a lot of money for play, right? right? But we're well, feeling it. Speaking about money, let's talk about secondary market because we're drinking Mictors tonight. And what do you think about this Mictors? I love it. Honestly, like, so for those of you that don't know, we actually filmed this episode once before. It was probably, what, about um, two months ago almost. Yeah. A month and a half ago, two months ago, like just after the last video, the last episode we filmed. And it didn't work out. Like we had a. Well, what happened was, is the mic got muted about 15 minutes into it. And then, yeah, so we couldn't recover the rest yeah. of the video. Is what it is, but um, we were I loved that it then. And yeah, I'm I've... honestly thinking I love it even more now. Yeah, I've been I've been touching it a little bit, not too much, but um, so like we said, this is the barrel strength rye, mm-hmm. um, the 2021 release, 53.2 percent. Yep. Um, I mean, the butterscotch, the caramel, the brown sugar you get on this. Um, it doesn't drink too heavy like a rye. What, do you, what would you say, like, yeah. rye content? I think it's, like, 60, 65. I wonder. I mean, usually, like, usually American ryes tend to be low 50s, right? Even under, I mean, no, well, low 50s, right? Like, just under 60. Um, I don't know. This one's hard to tell because I am getting, like, a good amount of rye on the finish, so I don't know. I would say that it's not as sweet as like some of the toasted barrels that I've had, but it could be because we're outside. Maybe I'm not picking up as much sweetness. Uh, but I love it. Like I, I, I mean the the dill notes and the like the rye bread kind of spice. Mm, There's yeah. a little bit of cinnamon in there. Yeah. I really like it. I think it's fantastic. Um, um, I'm looking up what the mash bill is right now. I think it's undisclosed. Really? If I'm not mistaken, like bourbon. What's it called? Breaking Bourbon usually discloses what is disclosed. And I think for this You're one... You're right. Undisclosed. Mash yeah. bill. Yeah. So I, I think... I don't know. If I had to guess, probably around 60, I would say, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would I would probably put it between 60 and 65. But I don't think it's up there. Like, I don't think it's in the 70s. No. Like, if you compare this to, like, what's the Pikesville 10-year-old or whatever it is, the that rye, mm-hmm. that's a lot sweeter. It drinks more like a bourbon. I would say that this is a higher rye than that, but then it's not like a barely legal rye yeah. kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, somewhere in between. Yeah, delicious stuff. Um, so secondary market, let's talk about Michter's specifically. Um, you know, some of their eight high, high age statement stuff just gets out of control. So I was looking up what the 25-year-old goes for, a brand new bottle of 25. I'm not talking like an old vintage. I'm talking like... Last year, like you were lucky enough to get it on retail. You walk home and <laughs> turn on your computer. Yeah, seventy five hundred U S dollars for Mictor's twenty five. What's right retail now. on that? It's like about around. 2, I think it's like twenty two. Is it? Yeah, okay. something like that. Maybe 20, a little bit less. Twenty two, twenty five. Yeah. yeah, it used to be. I remember it like being closer to a thousand. Not yeah, that it used long to, ago. Yeah, you're right. Uh, actually, it like wasn't that I, much. I could have sworn we had the opportunity to buy one at the LCBO. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Four or five years ago, for like seven hundred and fifty bucks, 
Like, I'm not kidding. Canadian dollars, which yeah. is like three Canadian bucks dollars, US. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, imagine what that bottle now goes for. Oh, I'm sure, right? Because like, you go back in years, you're looking at, you know, a couple hundred bucks more each year you go back. Yeah. We rarely get planes in this area. I'm very surprised that there's one. It's like a single engine low yeah, flyer. Yeah, something small. Um, but yeah, like, even the Mictor's 10 year old, right? Like, something like that, uh, you're looking at 225 bucks. Yeah, right? it's. It's climbing. Yeah. It is climbing. The ride goes for more. Yeah. Um, Again, something that we were able to get for about a buck sixty, a buck seventy, not that long ago, Mm -hmm. and now it's over two hundred bucks for sure. So, um, I don't think the ten is worth it to be honest with you. Like it's, it's a like a skip for me. I I like it. I disagree. I think that it's amazing. I remember the first time I ever had a ten-year-old. It was two thousand seventeen release. I drank half the bottle in one sitting. <laughs> I cracked it and I freaking downed half that bottle in it's, one sitting. It's easy. To, it's 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 easy really to drink, easy to drink. Man. It's Ooh. really easy to drink. You brought it over my house. I think that exact bottle. You brought it over my house Probably, and we yeah. and we reviewed it. I think together. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, this was like close to like the birth of Sipper Social Club. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember it being good, but I, I mean, I also remember. You know, the way I think all bourbon is, it's just, it's just bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it's a delicious bourbon. I, yeah. I like what Michter's is doing, uh, you know, sourcing their stuff, low entry proof. Um, yeah. I would have liked to see that at cash strength, at, at barrel proof. There like, is one. There is There one. is a 10 year old barrel proof bourbon. See that? Good luck finding it or yeah. getting it. Well, yeah. You have to kill somebody to get it. Um, but, but yeah, there is a, a such thing. It's very, very rare. It comes in a bottle looking like this, not like the wider ones. I was thinking about for what's happening on YouTube, uh, whiskey tube. Today we go what's happening in the whiskey world outside of YouTube oh. on Netflix. Have, yeah. you, have you seen uh, Heist? Yes. The Pappy Heist. I did watch that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, and I knew about that Pappy Heist um, before they released that Netflix. Uh, couple episodes okay yeah it was cool uh it was interesting to see it i uh a buddy of mine i was actually over and he's like yo put on this heist thing (laughs) i was like you want to drink some pappy while we watch this that's pretty cool (laughs) so we uh we poured a little bit and uh we watched it i see it seemed like see it's not that good (laughs) (laughs) what's crazy is that like this guy this happened before the the real boom of pappy right yeah this is when it first started so what, what year was this 2013 or something Early, uh, maybe even earlier, yeah. like early enough for him to have a case of Pappy Fifteen, and like his buddy comes over and says, "I want some," and he just gave him two bottles. Yeah, like, right. No one, no one ever would do that yeah. now. <laughs> like two bottles. That's like <laughs> fucking. <laughs> you're talking about like that's a tuition for a year. I mean, <laughs> where was the you know inventory uh, checks on this thing? Because this guy was like literally just taking bottles off the assembly line, like off the bottling line and just like, I'll just take these home and drink them or I'll just take a cask It or was whatever. Like, just like a poorly run distillery, obviously. I mean, I get like, there probably isn't that much like inventory checks, right? Like, I mean, if you take a couple bottles. Yeah. I, honestly, I mean, now it, I'm sure it's way different. It's got to be different with now. all the laser coating. They, and everything, yeah, right? laser coating. If you're near the the barrels, you're being watched. There's cameras everywhere for sure. That's why they give their employees free whiskey. Yeah. So they don't need to take it. Yeah, I guess right? I guess you would have to. Like I think way. I'm pretty sure every distillery gives their their employees some stuff. I know a buddy of mine. His dad worked at Labatt's forever, and they would get two cases a month. Like compensation right that's pretty cool but so that's kind of how glenn goin started their whole teapot dram thing yeah right? that's a teapot dram story yeah. where Just, everyone got a couple measures a day yeah and if you didn't drink it you threw it in the teapot and came back and i'm sure by the end of the day it was nicely blended together and yeah good to go yeah yeah it's pretty cool so yeah, check out uh, the Heist. So there's it's a series, and there's a, what one or two episodes. This, I think it's the two Pappy? episodes. Two, just two of the, yeah, two of the series episodes focus yeah. on the Pappy Heist. Yeah, there's yeah, a bunch of other was, stuff I didn't actually even watch. I just I watched only the Pappy episodes. Yeah. So this guy was uh, literally supplying like all the big ups into Kentucky with uh, yeah with the bourbon, including barrels. <laughs> yeah, he had he had barrels of uh, wild turkey as well. 
Yeah. The, near the end, yeah. Before he got... Well, I'm not going to spoil it, but... Well, check he it got out. busted, obviously. <laughs> yeah, well, he's still telling the story, so... There you go. Should we get to grading, or what do you yeah, think? Yeah, what do you, uh, let's let's talk scores on this Michter's. So I think the last time we sat at this table and reviewed this, I gave it an 88. I feel like it's, I was a little harsh. I feel like, you know what, I'm going to go with an 89. I think this is really good stuff. I am exactly with you with 89. I think the, the complexity of this, the boldness, it's very rich. It's very what you want with a rye whiskey, an American rye whiskey, in my opinion. It's, yeah. it's stereotypical rye whiskey. Yep. Um, it's it's good nice spice level the the sweetness uh you know is well balanced with all the other notes so um yeah, yeah. very very good and what did we pay for this i want to say it was like 110 bucks we, we got, got a great, really good deal we got a great deal we got a really good deal really good deal our, our buddy uh, mark from liquor lodge hooked us up on this one yeah so i mean if you're finding this at retail it's an auto buy for yeah. sure yeah what would you pay secondary for this I paid two hundred bucks for this. I think two hundred. I mean, if you, given the state of current market, like, yeah, I think two hundred is probably a decent price for this. I think they go for more on secondary. We're talking Canadian dollars, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think. I, well, I think I've heard of people selling for Canadian double that, like four hundred. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, probably a couple like one offs. Not really what it's going for. I think it's going for around three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I could Canadian. see that. Yeah. So. Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Uh, if you want to grab this podcast earlier than everyone else, check out our Patreon. You can join for as little as a dollar and get the Whiskey Rant podcast uh, sooner than anyone else. Yep. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Much appreciated. And until next time, have a good one. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.